welcome to Bikini Bottom, a normally peaceful undersea sanctuary. Today, it will be transformed into a theater of pure horror, wherein our little yellow friend will play the starring role. Today is the big day. I have devised an ingenious plan to finally steal the Krabby Patty formula. And if Bikini Bottom happens to get demolished in the process, oh well. <laughs> With my brand new Duplicatotron 3000, I'll clone an army of robots that will wreak mayhem and destruction at my command. One last review of the checklist. Let's see. Item number one is Plankton a genius? Answer, yes! Okay, checklist complete. Throw in the switch! <laughs> Welcome, my perfectly obedient robot army. Hang on, I want to get a photo for my scrap... Oh, hey, hello? What do you think you're doing? Oh, no, 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 wait, wait! But I'm your master! I made you! No! No! Oh, my good China! Another perfect day playing robots and racehorses. Yeah, only I keep getting the racehorses and the robots mixed up. Wouldn't it be great if we had real robots to play with, Patrick? I'd name mine Robo Jr. or Zorlon or maybe Frankie. Yeah, these unreal robots are getting boring. Hey, what if we put the robots in here? Oh, how shellfish of you. <laughs> it's not just any shell. It's my magic wishing shell. Wow, that's great, Patrick. So we put the toy robots in here. Okay. Then we say the magic wishing words and shake the magic wishing shell. Okay. Then we go to sleep, and in the morning, we'll have real robots to play with. But Patrick, aren't we going to say the magic wishing words? You already did. So, okay is the magic wishing word? It used to be Alakazama Alabala Wisna Tikitana Fushbar Griddle Bits Von Wiedeschnauzer, but I kept forgetting it. Are you sure this will work? Sure. Last week, I only had one big cookie crumb and I was really hungry. So I put my cookie crumb in the magic wishing shell, then I said the magic wishing word and shook it, and in the morning, I had lots of little cookie crumbs. Patrick, I proclaim that tomorrow is going to be the best day ever. Good night, SpongeBob. Good night, Patrick. The next morning. <laughs> gonna play with robots, gonna play with robots, gonna play with robots, gonna play with. Wow! Uh, Gary, did you do that? <laughs> Yeah, Gary. Hello, lovely people. The world wants a gear to you, and I'm gonna be skipping these cutscenes uh, as soon as I. Oh, I have to hold the button. <laughs> I have an email in front of the TV, so I couldn't quite read that. But anyway, hey, everybody wants a gear to you, and welcome back to the 12 Days of Gaming. Today, we'll be playing through SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. Ooh, it's gonna be fancy. <laughs> so, this is a remake of uh, Battle for Bikini Bottom, which. You don't really see that often. You don't really see a whole lot of remakes of movie tie-in games or anything like that. So this one is pretty interesting. A note from hey, you didn't let me finish reading it. A note from Mr. Krabs. <sighs> and it even smells sweaty. Ahoy there, SpongeBob. As a faithful crew member of the Krusty Krab, you've been er uh, promoted to head shiny object collector. A promotion! That's right! A promotion! So what this here new job entails is you collecting all these shiny objects that the robots are leaving behind and bringing them to me. Now stop seahorsing around and get busy collecting. Yeah, that's not Mr. Krabs' voice, and that's something that a lot of people have problems with this game, myself included. Oh, there's a rubber ducky here. That's cute. So... <laughs> 
This picture is incredible. <laughs> so this game, uh, something that's pretty fun is that this game does indeed uh, have uh, the voice actors from the TV show return to reprise their roles. Uh, except for some reason, Mr. Krabs, I don't know why. Um, and there's another actor a little bit later who also didn't return either. Um, but uh, I kind of wish that they did at least re-record the roles uh, nowadays with the current actors. I know the one from a roommate passed away a couple years ago, so that one couldn't happen. Um, but they could have at least done that for Mr. Krabs. But anyway, yeah, Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated is a pretty great game. If I were to let's play this game, this is definitely the version that I would be covering. Although I will say that there's a kind of... It's kind of a mixed bag of whether or not this one is the superior version, in my personal opinion. Because this game is technically better than the original versions. It definitely has a, a higher quality budget with the graphics and things like that, and all that good stuff. Although there's a few technical issues here and there that kind of drag down the experience a little bit. Um, I already made a video a little while back of... Um, just demonstrating one of my favorite glitches in this game. I don't know if we'll be able to demonstrate that in this video, but uh, there will be a card on the corner of the screen that will take you to the video, so you can check that out if you'd like. You. Needs to do laundry. And now we found uh, one of Patrick's uh, socks, and that's pretty interesting. Now, something kind of funny is that uh, when you're a kid, you don't really think that much about voice actors and things like that, um, but... Uh, as you get older and you start recognizing voice actors uh, playing different roles and things like that, it's kind of an interesting experience because it was, kind of, it was recently when I realized that the voice actor that plays Patrick on the show also plays uh, Marshall's dad in How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> and the actor that plays Spongebob is also the voice of Sparrow the Dragon. <laughs> Ah, there's nothing like the sounds of your own neighborhood. Go away, SpongeBob. You're polluting my thinking space. Trying to steal the Krabby Patty formula again, eh, Plankton? Well, you won't get away with it. I've got bigger fish to fry. I've got to figure out how to regain control of the chum bucket from those robots. Where did they come from? Where? Um, I don't know. Not for me, though, that's for sure. They just showed up out of nowhere and started calling me rude names and throwing things. <laughs> they even bent all my spoons. I love those spoons like they were my children. That's terrible. Oh, won't you help me stop them? Before they bend all my forks? Not the forks! Of course I'll help. But wait. I'm supposed to collect a whole lot of golden spatulas. Golden spatulas, eh? SpongeBob, if you could get me back into the chum bucket, I'll give you a bucket full of golden spatulas. In your dreams. You've got a deal. So I don't know if I ever said this in a video or anything like that, but I gotta say, Plankton is my absolute favorite cartoon character ever. <laughs> This opinion is probably going to change by the time that I upload this video because I always change my mind, but Plankton is just awesome. Like, he never lets anything get in the way of him trying to succeed in his goals. I just dropped by to give you a bubble hand. Bubble buddy. You see, you're going to need to learn some new bubble blowing moves if you're going to journey to the ninth dimension and defeat the giant monkey man. But, uh, all I need to do is figure out how to get rid of these robots. Oh, yeah, sorry. I've been in the soap bottle a little too long. Uh, where were we? Uh, something about new bubble moves? Right! Press this button and you'll launch yourself straight up in the air with bubble power that defeats anything that is directly above you. Try it out! Tisk tisk bubble buddy, you should know by now. The best way to start getting a reward is to defeat the eighth to, to save the eighth uh, dimension by defeating the giant monkey man. I completely butchered that quote, so I'm gonna redo it in post commentary. <laughs> so going back to what I was saying about uh, Plankton, the big reason why he's my favorite cartoon character of all time is because he's a really great role model for perseverance. And that sounds really weird because he's kind of the villain of the show, but he never gives up. No matter how many times he fails at getting the Krabby Patty formula, he always keeps trying no matter what. So, Plankton is, you know, he may not, you know, 
do the stuff he does legally because, you know, stealing a Gravity Patty formula is kind of frowned upon in most societies, but he never gives up, and that's the important thing. So we kind of don't have a whole lot of time to go grab uh, this next reward. Hopefully we'll be able to do it. There's a little over there. And I always like that, how you start off the game with uh, three units of health, because uh, Spongebob's wearing three pairs of underwear right now. <laughs> and then you get like a new one and you can now wear four pairs. It's really great. So now let's go inside Squidward's house. First, those stupid robots ruined a perfectly relaxing mud bath this morning. And now you show up. Can my day get any more dreary? I am so sorry, Squidward. Patrick and I were just playing a game and- Oh, I correct myself. I should have known that whole robot problem involved both of you. Squidward, I don't know what to do. How can I fix everything? Why don't you move to another town? That should help out more than enough. <laughs> move to another town. <laughs> I cracked me up. <laughs> but seriously, just jump around like an idiot. That should at least make me smile. <laughs> I didn't know Squidward had a lamb. Whee! I'm jumping around like an idiot because he told me to. Whee! Help me out. You're the best. Don't touch me. I feel like I skipped over a line of dialogue right there because I thought Squidward was supposed to say something along the lines of stop jumping around. So, yeah, I recognize most of the artwork in here, especially this one because it's one of the funniest moments ever. But, I gotta ask, why is it over there? I gotta ask, who are these two? I haven't watched this show in a long time, so I don't know if those characters are supposed to be important to Squidward or anything like that. But seriously, who are these two and why are they randomly here? All the artwork in here is supposed to be Squidward themed. We can even see Handsome Squidward right here, which is really, really funny. And something else that's pretty amusing is... Wah! Now he has a mustache, and it took the game a little second to... for to render. <laughs> Didn't I pay you to go away? Ah, so Squidward is a fan of microtransactions, I see. So now we check that out, let's talk to Patrick. Hey, Patrick. Nice talk. What sock? The one you're standing on. Oh, that one. It's... Well, if that one's lost, where are your other socks? Oh, they're more lost. A bunch of robots came through here and stole my whole sock collection. I could use some help getting them back. Sure thing, Patrick. What are best friends for? Okay, then. For every ten socks you bring back to me, I'll give you a golden turkey baster. You mean spatula? Bless you. Did you find my lost socks? Not yet, Patrick. Oh, did they find you? <laughs> so, one of the technical issues that I was hinting you out earlier, I don't know if this is still the case, but I know in some versions of this game, there's a glitch where if you do something like ground pound or attack a, a an NPC, you can make them bigger and things like that. And you can do the same with Patrick as well. So, before we move on to the next area that we'll be exploring in this video, I just want to say, just look at the backgrounds. <laughs> this is just so cool. We can see the giant needle right there. It kind of reminds me of the Space Needle in Seattle. <laughs> That's probably what they were meant to do or something like that. That rock randomly... That is a random pop in texture, that's gonna bother me. But we can also see Goolagoon over here and things like that. We can see Sand Mountain up there. We can see the Chum Bucket, kind of, and Sandy's Treehouse. And we can also see like the Flying Dutchman ship, which, my goodness, that needs a 3D Death Slider. <laughs> so. We're not going to be exploring too much of this game in this video, but we will be going over towards Jellyfish Fields. And I want to know something. If you hack the game and go over there, can you interact with those jellyfish? Because uh, I really want to know if that's possible. Ah, the rolling green hills of Jellyfish Fields. A place to experience nature at its most raw and sometimes a bit tender from the stings.
Squidward, are you okay? No, I'm not okay, you barnacle head. Do I look like I'm okay? Well, your nose does look pretty big. I mean, bigger than usual, because it's usually pretty big. And you look clammy, and oh my gosh, you're bald! I've always been bald, but now I'm stung all over. Well, according to the Jellyfisher Field Manual, severe jellyfish stings can be treated effectively by applying a thick layer of King Jellyfish Jelly to the affected areas. <laughs> King j -j Jellyfish? Well, I guess you're off to scale Spork Mountain and die a horrible death under the vicious tentacles of King Jellyfish. <laughs> I'll stay here, balled up here in excruciating pain. You do that! Don't worry, Squidward! I'll bring back that King Jellyfish jelly for you to rub all over yourself. <laughs> when SpongeBob gets a random deep voice like that is the best thing ever. <laughs> Alright, so welcome to Jellyfish Fields, the first world of the game. Now, we're not going to be taking care of too much in this video because uh, this is kind of a long world. And there's a lot of stuff to do here, so we're just going to be showcasing just a little bit of it. Now, we did see a little bit of more of the technical problems with this version. We got to see the lovely pop-in textures as the camera pans over the area. Now, the thing about this game is that uh, the remake was made to tie alongside a Spongebob movie that was supposed to come out this year. I don't know off the top of my head if that movie is out yet or not, or if it got delayed to next year or anything like that. But what I do know is that this movie is what that movie was supposed to release alongside the game. The movie itself ended up getting delayed because of the um, <clears throat> the thing, and they continued to making the game. Uh, the thing is, the game itself had a bit of a rushed development cycle, so that it could release alongside the movie. But then the movie got delayed, but then they kept the little game on schedule. So it kind of feels like they should have maybe delayed the game as well. Um, but I guess it was far enough in production where they felt like they could release it. Now it is a pretty quality remake. And, um, there are definitely some problems here and there, and there are definitely a lot of them on launch day. Um, this game had a day one update. And the thing is, I don't get why video game companies nowadays are relying on day one updates to patch up their games to make them playable because the versions that you're sending out to your reviewers are the regular ones that are going to be on the cartridge or on the disc or something like that and they're not going to be exposed to the day one update until it's day one after they've written their review so most reviews nowadays are talking about how games are horribly optimized and things like that and when you actually get the game on day one it's like oh that fixed the problem and now the review has become outdated so yeah that's a kind of a big reason why um if i ever make reviews and things like that like on game bites or something like that i'm happy that i don't rely on trying to make reviews for new games and things like that especially nowadays where games get updated like every other week or something like that like trying to do a review of smash brothers or splatoon at launch that would be nightmares So as we continue on over here, I'd like to explain my history with the Spongebob Squarepants series. So this game specifically, I knew it existed when I was a kid. I did want to try it because I loved 3D platformers, but I never got around to it um, because uh, I just could never really find a copy for the consoles that I owned at the time. And it wasn't until I was like, I think I, I want to say I was like 17 or something like that when I first, uh, when I first played through the GameCube version of this game. Um, and I do really enjoy the GameCube version. I do definitely think it has problems. I don't think it's a perfect uh, 3D platformer or anything like that. It definitely has problems. Um, and uh, the remake uh, um, kind of has a lot of the same problems too. They, it, this is very much like a 1v1. This is very much a 1x1 remake of the original with a few additions here and there, which aren't that great. But... This is still a really great 3D platformer if you love Spongebob Squarepants, and I've heard that this is the best Spongebob game out there. Um, the one based off the movie, I've heard that one was pretty good too. Although, I played the PC version, which was a point-and-click adventure, and I kind of don't like those kind of games. So my experience with the Spongebob movie game wasn't that great. So there is uh, stuff over there that we could do as well, as soon as we find the thing that can activate it. And... Going back to this remake compared to the 
original version. The original version does look good though, but I gotta say, this remake is just absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> I absolutely love uh, what they did with the art style in this game, because everything looks like it belongs in the world of Spongebob. Even this grass, uh, it just looks like it comes straight from the shell and things like that, but it still looks gorgeous. Like, even though the original show is a 2D animated and this is a 3D environment, it still looks like it fits in with the world, and we can also see that with uh, how the w with the way that the texture of the water, it looks like the goo from the show. The buildings in the background also look like they blend into the, in to the world as well. It's just all incredibly well done, and the HD prettiness of this version is just so great to look at. And, like, I'm really glad this game did get a remake, and it is kind of rare to see a movie or a TV show tie-in game get a remake at all. So hopefully that means we'll get an HD remake of the Toy Story 2 video game someday because that's my favorite 3D platformer ever, except for Mario Odyssey. I go back and forth between those two all the time. <laughs> hey Gary, what's shaking? Meow. Meow. Wow, a bungee jump for a golden spatula. I must be in heaven. They also definitely upped uh, the quality of the animations for when the characters are talking. They looked good in the original version, but they definitely look a lot more closer to uh, the quality of the actual show itself in this in this version of the game. It's really incredible. Like SpongeBob himself just looks so squishy um, when uh, he's animated like that, which works very well for the character. And this right here, this is a bungee jump. <laughs> It's just really, really funny. He's bungee jumping with his underwear, and it's really hilarious. <laughs> now, he has an expression during this, which you will never be able to see during normal gameplay, which is absolutely hilarious. If I can find a picture of it, I'll have it on screen right now. Um, but if I can't, then I just imagine he looks funny, which he always does, so I guess that's not that much difficult to... Imagine that was proper grammar. I don't care what anyone says. I will change the rules of grammar to make it proper <laughs> All right, so we're gonna be playing for just a little bit longer I my mindset is that we're gonna finish this area and then we'll be moving on uh, and wrapping up uh, this episode of the 12 days of gaming so This is a game that I was considering doing a let's play for um, a couple times um, the big reason why I haven't done it yet is because we've done a lot of 3D platformers already on the channel in recent years. Um, like, for example, just since 2017, we've done Galaxy, we've done 3D Land, uh, we recently did Spire 2, Ripto's Rage. And I like to have variety on the channel. I don't want too many uh, games of the same genre so close to each other. Um, but... Who knows, we might see Let's Play this game at some point. And fun fact, there was going to be a Battle for Bikini Bottom up to the 12 Days of Gaming a couple years ago. Um, I believe it was during the 2017 lineup where I had a video recorded, or at least I tried to record a video, I don't remember how far into that recording session I got, um, but I did try to do that. Um, the video itself ended up getting cancelled uh, alongside the rest of the 12 Days of Gaming 2017, um, but I'm kind of glad that that didn't happen because that video would have gotten super outdated less than a year after it came out because I believe it was around PAX East 2018 where this game was announced. It's kind of weird that a tie-in game, that a remake of a tie-in game, would uh, come out like a year after it was originally announced. Because you'd think that there wouldn't be that much effort that goes into remakes or anything like that, but no, there is actually a ton of work that has to go into making remakes, because you have to make sure that everything still looks good, you gotta look at what needs to be changed and what needs to stay the same, you gotta make sure everything is working properly um, across the new hardware and things like that. It's not as easy to make a remake as most people would probably believe. Fresh like a spring breeze. I love opening presents. So as we continue on over here, there is one thing that I would like to say that's kind of a criticism that I have with this game. So the music in general is pretty great, and it definitely fits in with the style of Spongebob Squarepants. But I will say, I don't think it's that 
great to listen to in long uh, sessions. Um, because, like, for example, Super Mario Odyssey, I could listen to the cascade music for hours. Um, but this music, it is good and all, um, and I wouldn't say no to listening to it in short bursts, um, but in long play sessions it can kind of get a little bit stale after a while. Um, now, this is probably not that great of an example to discuss this with, because there's a lot of songs later in the game which I think are absolutely incredible, um, which is kind of also rare to say for a tie-in game. <laughs> I feel like that's going to be like the catchphrase for this video, and if I ever do a Let's Play, that'll also be the catchphrase for the Let's Play! Yay! Alright, let's go down here and jump this way. I absolutely love this part right here where it's all bouncy. Yay, bouncy! So this was the last of the places that I wanted to explore in this video, um, because, like I said, this world does go on for a little while, so if we took care of the entirety of Jellyfish Fields in this episode, it'd probably go on for like an hour or so, um, and I have a feeling that some of the later episodes in this year's lineup are already going to be that long anyway, so I kind of don't want this video to go on for too long, but we'll go on for just a few more minutes to demonstrate one last thing. and toys and mail. Hey, huh? W what Oh, yeah, it's that sponge kid. And now, what was I supposed to tell you? That Patrick is surrounded by robots and needs my help. Huh? Oh, no. I think it had something to do with massaging my feet. Well, if massaging your feet will save Patrick, then massage I must. Help! They're making me hit myself! Massaging your feet isn't working. I think I'd better try a more direct approach. By clipping my toenails? Here I come, Patrick! Yeah, that's not Mermaid Man. He sounds nothing like him. But what I will say is, I love his character design. <laughs> like, he's always had a really funny character design. He's obviously like a parody of Aquaman and things like that, but I especially love his pink slippers. <laughs> They're just so funny. So, this box right here, um, this is obviously taken from the imaginary box uh, from that one episode where SpongeBob and Patrick were playing in a box together. Which, by the way, it wasn't until recently where I realized the joke with that episode name. It's called the Idiot Box, and that's what people call it a TV. I didn't realize that until recently. Um, but yeah, that was the last thing I wanted to demonstrate. I wanted to demonstrate Mermaid Man and sliding down the thing because it's really funny. But I'm taking care of all that. We're in this video off here. So thank you all so much for watching this episode of the 12 Days of Gaming. If you'd like to see a Let's Play of this game, let me know in the comments below. It might happen at some point because this is a really, really fun game. So, thank you all so much for watching this video of the 12 Days of Gaming. And until next time, leave the gear to you. Oh, yeah. I cannot do that laugh. <laughs>